Well, I was uh, the first American woman to do a Hong Kong movie, and I didn't know that. When I went over there, I thought they were going to make me look like I was Asian. I thought I would have, because I saw the old Chinese movies, I thought I'd have long, black braids, you know, I thought I'd be swirling my head with the razor blades, and you know, I'd have the Chinese costumes on, they go, no, you're going to be a cop from England, and I was like, what, a cop from England, you know, and the, I think everybody was a little leery of me at first, because they were like, oh, wow, here's this, like, five foot three petite woman coming in and fighting, and um, I think after the first night, they respected me, because I tried hard, I did everything they said, I got hurt, I didn't cry, you know, and uh, I think that they started considering me as one of their own. They gave me a Chinese name, which was La Fu Lok, and I kind of fit in, you know, even though I was like an outsider coming in and I, I stayed in Hong Kong and did a lot of films there, uh, it, I think that I've earned the respect that, you know, that, that I wasn't what they thought, I, you know, that, I, oh, I broke a nail or something like that, that I really gave 110% in the fights. <laughs> After I did uh, Yes, Madam, uh, Golden Harvest signed me for three pictures. And I was supposed to do the one with Jackie Chan, Armor of God, and that's when he got hurt, and they postponed it, so they put me in Writing Wrongs instead of that. So that was actually, that was my first film uh, for my contract with Golden Harvest. I was basically uh, uh, an agent that was after Yoon Bu. Uh, I was trying to abide by the law, and he was almost like a vigilante, and I was trying to catch him and uh, basically bring him to justice. And throughout the film, we were kind of like this, and we had a lot of fights together, and then in the end, we ended up uh, bonding. The interesting thing about uh, righting wrongs or above the law is they had an ending where I died, and there was an ending where Yoon Bu died, and where a couple other people died, and I died very grisly with like a... a stake through my throat, stuck up on the wall. <laughs> Yun Bu died, he fell off a helicopter and died. And, and they aired it, and people didn't like it. They were like, no, Cynthia can't die. We, no, she's not dead. So they called me back, and they reshot a different ending where we don't die. So you could see an ending where we live, or you could see an ending where we die. And it was interesting. It was all because of the, the appeal of the people. They kind of believed it, saying, no, we don't want our heroes to die. <laughs> Corey Yoon is, is a little different than Sammo. I think uh, I've worked previously on Yes, Madam for seven and a half months with Corey Yoon. And he would push me. He would push me to do bizarre things. You know, I remember, like, uh, he had me um, uh, in a film in a truck with my leg just stuck to the window and my head down at the wheel. And dirt, again, there's the dirt. They love that sand in your face, you know, and hanging. And I was like, oh my God, and the truck is driving fast. And I was like, I'm gonna fall off here, you know? And it's like, can you strap my ankle at least on, you know? And it was like killing my leg. But it's like with Corey Yoon, he, he knew he could push me and and that's what he would do in, in, in like all the films. And same thing in, in writing wrongs. Like I remember like landing on a table and landing on my chest with, you know, not too many pads, like just bang, flat, or laying on my back, flat, you know, like those moves were kind of tough because I did come into the industry as a martial artist, not as a stunt person, so stunts were all new to me. I didn't learn that in my karate school, you know, and I think uh, he pulled the best out of me because he made me do things that if I said, oh, I, I don't think I could do that, he'd say, yeah, I need to go here, stay here for two hours, like, and, and work on this. He was tougher with me because he, he, he could he could push me where Sammo, you know, knew what I could do, but he wasn't as, as tough as, as Yoon Kwe. With Yoon Bu, I wish I could have spoke English to him. At that point, uh, he didn't really know too much English, and we tried to do a lot of communication. I just, uh, I loved fighting with him. Like I said, he was like the best person I ever fought with. He just amazed me, and I remember he got hurt on that film. There's a scene where he jumps from a balcony down to the ground, and it's quite high. And basically what they did is they took the grass, and they picked it up, and they put a mat, just a thin little mat on it, and he jumped down, and I think he hurt his back. He was really hurt, but yet, you know, he got up and continued, you know. I think a lot of times, you know, people go, I got to go to the doctor, and we can't finish shooting for the day. 
but uh, he he was just uh, amazing and he just had a nice smile. We, all, we did a lot of smiling at each other and you knew there was a mutual respect for the fighting styles but uh, we couldn't converse too much and I, I was kind of sad about that. I always wished that you know I could have got to know him a little bit better. It was a great team of Yoon Kui, uh, Mong Hoi and uh, Yoon Byu. Uh, they're all so creative and so talented and they would work together as a great team and they would they would put you know the fight scenes together they'd all put their input in uh, they're you know they would include me and say what do you want to do what can you do and it's funny like with Yoon Kui because Yoon Kui he, he, he had a, a, a he didn't speak that much English but his voice was really strong and intimidating but he'd always go okay Cindy Okay, you know, and he'd always had this soft little voice when he talked to me, and uh, it was funny. I know when we were shooting a scene, right? I had to do the scene with Yoon Byu, and and Yoon Kui would try to speak English for me, and he'd go closer, you know, and I'd go closer, Cindy, closer, right? So it was literally like this close to Yoon Byu's face, like saying the line. I was going, oh, this is weird. And what he was saying was further, further, further. And he had closer mixed up. And I was like, who knew? You know, I was like this close away. So maybe that's Hong Kong filming. Maybe, you know, they really like you to talk that close to each other. <laughs> I knew Karen Shepard from competition. Uh, when I first came out, she was kind of, she was still competing, and then she stopped. Uh, we weren't that great of friends at that time. We've become friends over the years. Uh, but I think what happened is, is Yoon Kui came to me and he gave me three names of people to do a whip with me, you know? And uh, I, I thought Karen was the best. I says, you know, I said, you know, let's, let's get Karen. And uh, she was great. I mean, she was really, you know, we, we, we got hurt, we bonded. Uh, one little funny story, though, is though, um, when Karen came on the set, uh, she uh, said, I can't be killed. You know, I can't be killed because it's not good for my career to be killed, right? And <laughs> what Yoon Kui did is he said, OK, you're not going to get killed. And he said, all right, they pretend they were filming the camera, and they had Karen run off, and then Karen left, and then they got the stunt guy dressed as her. And had me stab her and falls, she falls over the balcony and gets killed. And I always wondered, oh, what would Karen think when she saw that, you know? Because, the, you know, Ed, I, I think what happened is that Karen actually loved it because the scene between us, I actually think this is the best scene of two women fighting together in history. It's the best I've ever seen anyway. You know, that she had to be blown away and go, oh, wow, that was good. But I was always kind of scared because I knew that they were, they did that little, that little, uh, that thing pretending that they were shooting the footage. <laughs> The fight scene with Yoon Byu in the apartment was very complicated. It was very tricky. Uh, at that point, my knee was still bothering me from the last one because I went on that right after Millionaire's Express. So I had to change my whole kicking routine to my left side. A lot of times when you're a martial artist, you're dominant on one side and on the other. So it, w it was... Uh, it was a test for me to really, you know, up my skills. But we did crazy moves. I remember, like, you know, doing aerials and flips. And one move that I was, like, blown away, and I was sitting there like, oh, at Yoon Byu, is he did a flip, and he landed on a rocking chair just on these little little ledges. And, and he missed. He missed. He missed about probably 30, 40 times, you know? And then he finally got it where he landed on it. I was like, wow, that was, that was pretty intense. And just... Uh, you know, going up off the walls and jumping and stuff. It it was uh, it took us a long time. I don't remember how long to shoot that scene, but uh, again, brilliant choreography from Hong Kong. <laughs> the scene in the airport hangar. I think we might have shot that uh, for about a month, and uh, it it was like every when we do these fight scenes, it's it's kind of hard on your body because. You're doing fights every single day for a month. You might have like one day off, and we're not talking like 12 hours. We're talking as long as it takes to get the scene. And I remember when I used to wake up and go, oh, no fighting today. Oh, good, my body, you know, could, could recover because even though you, you, know, you have certain pads on, you still get hit in all different areas and, and things. And um, that, that, it was a great scene. I loved it. It was just very, very strong and very, uh, very intense scene.
There was a scene where we're in the ending and someone comes with a chain and they put it around my neck. Well, they came and they did it really hard and hit me right in the nose. Now I'm trying to be the tough person here. I'm trying to hang with the stunt people. I see all these tough guys and the tears are just like rolling out of my eyes because it hurt, you know, when someone hits you in the nose. And uh, Yun Kui was directing it and he'd come up and he looks at my nose, right? It's all swollen and red and he goes, it looks better that way. <laughs> When I did Writing Wrongs, uh, I, it was a very hard film. Well, they were all hard films for me to do. And it's funny because I'd always go, oh, I, I, I don't think I could do another film. I think this is it because I'm going to die on the next film, you know? And I'd get up and I couldn't walk or I, you know, my leg would be swollen, you know, from getting hit. Uh, and I, you know, sometimes like it just like, oh, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm so hurt. I, I don't know if I could do this. And then, Writing Wrongs is done, and we go, they had midnight shows where you'd see it, like a premiere. And you know, you'd, you'd be amazed. I'd be amazed. I'd be like, is that really me up there doing that action? Like I was seeing someone else, you know? And, and I go, I can't wait to do the next film. I have to do the, you know, I can't wait, and it's going to be better, you know? And I guess I, I think, you know, that's how it is, is like you just see those films in the end. Even today, I get blown away when I see them. You know, it's like I'm watching them for the first time because it's almost like I've had stunt people say, you couldn't do that. You physically couldn't do that. And I'm like, yeah, I did, you know? And, or how did you do this? And it's just, uh, it's just wonderful experiences. And, and the funny thing is, even now, I'd like to go back and do one. I'd like to, you know, get in there and do that again because uh, I haven't really done that kind of fighting since I've done my Hong Kong films. And, and to me, that shows the best work I could do. Kung 第一部戲就拍一部比較像外國形式多一點的加上動作
叫做發揮大啲啦，但係但係就同我之前拍嗰啲戲一般就唔同。但係呢部戲嚟講咧，喺好多市場都好受歡迎，嚇好受歡迎嘅。我哋都係取自一部外國嘅電影，咁樣去去寫一個咁嘅劇本出嚟啦，嚇！但係即係你俾我嚟講，我係咪我中唔中意呢種？其實呢類角色我唔係咁中意，因為冇乜唔得輕鬆啊，即係同埋係好比較上係誒誒，即係發揮好難發揮嘅呢啲戲，呢啲戲好難，根本根本完全係唔冇戲發揮可言嘅，只不過就係完全發揮動作。應該係同期，羅富洛係係啊，皇家師姐啊嘛，皇家師姐一齊一齊出嚟噶嘛。但係羅富洛誒新手就係學過噶啦，佢佢走去中國學武術噶嘛。其實佢啲動作咧就只不過係誒蝕，冇、呃、人識，冇人得，冇女仔可以去做得到佢咁嘅功架，而係佢又係一個外國人。俾嗰陣時香港人睇，哇！外國人都咁犀利嘅，即係武術武術中國人叻嘅，點解外國人會咁叻嘅咧？又有一個咁嘅噱頭啦，同埋本身我哋呢部戲，除咗羅富洛之外，我哋仲請咗一個美國嘅武術冠軍，但係外國人嘅，做一個反派嘅。我哋純粹係為咗呢部戲係想 sell 翻去，即係 sell 翻外國市場大啲嘅個目標。嗰、那個女仔都好唔信啦，羅富洛嘅，羅富洛又唔信嗰個女仔嘅，嚇兩個成日年年都兩個人爭冠軍嘅，但係我哋又揾咗羅富洛做女主角，佢又做配角，嚇，佢哋有打，佢哋有一場打嘅好似，即係兩個都即係大家鬥鬥坑啊，大家都唔你唔讓我，我唔讓你㗎，因為佢哋佢哋之前喺美國已經識㗎啦，佢哋嚇，成日比賽，咁羅富洛嘅本身佢就。以外國人嚟講，女仔嚟講，我諗暫時都未有第二個可以代替到佢嚇。咁佢就比較上硬淨啲啦，佢同埋係幾誒、呃、女仔嚟講係幾實淨嘅嚇，即係唔會唔會話即係即係哇好即係好女仔嘅精，好實淨嘅。我都係同佢合作一部戲嘅啫嘛，我同佢都唔係好熟嘅，都即係只不過拍呢部戲大家先認識嘅啫，嚇。佢係之前佢係拍過德寶嗰啲戲咧，嚇，拍過德寶咩皇家，就係同阿羅同阿同阿楊紫瓊啦，咁佢哋佢哋拍，後來即係始終咧想話啊 sell 下外國啊，即係市場啊，咁啊揾到佢。我哋飛機嗰場戲咧，我哋拍飛機嗰場戲，我哋之前咧，之前喺香港都研究寫咗好耐噶啦呢場戲，畫曬 storyboard。以前因為我我哋拍動作片唔係好興寫埋啲故事故事簿出嚟嘅，嚇！我哋拍呢部戲咧就製作得好認真啦。我哋每一每一個畫面啊，我哋都要，因為你要出去外國拍咧，就嗰啲問題會可能。可能會唔係話你喺香港，我呢樣唔得，我可以變第二樣嘢。始終自己地方，即係一個電話啊咩，你外國唔得，我哋一定要跟翻外國人咁樣。同埋我哋去嗰邊請嗰啲 production house， 即係請人哋去幫手嗰啲，人哋都要你，你攞你你要拍咩啊？你要拍咩鏡頭啊？人哋都要好清楚，人哋都要清清楚楚，要知道你要去做啲咩嘢。而我哋更加唔可以。當香港電影咁樣去到嗰度啊，點啊？我要咁樣咁樣，喂，講啊唔得噶嘛！你一定要證實俾人睇，你係，誒、哎，我係要呢啲就係、是、要呢啲，係嘛？咁又又要拍飛機呢場戲咧，好好好好好麻煩啊！拍得。同埋我哋嗰啲預算啲時間預少咗，預得唔夠啊！我哋心諗有好多嘢
，拍完外貌，拍完咩？誒、哎、室內嗰啲我哋咪翻嚟咪整又整個室機咁樣喐下喐下咪得咯。原來唔係咁，唔係話你咁簡單可以啫。原來一去到呢啲嘢，通通都係要喺我哋呢度拍嘅。即係你翻到去咧，就會變咗第二樣嘢嘅，因為可能人哋拍戲嗰啲經驗經驗好夠啦嚇。我去到已經已經設計好設計好曬。哦，你拍室誒、呃、機艙就呢啲，拍誒、呃、拍飛機拖人啊，就喺呢個機場拍誒、呃、空中跳落嚟啊，你又要走去邊一度？當時咧，我已經喺喺紐西蘭，都係因為太多年啦，我都去過一個去過一個跳降落傘嘅學校，去跳降落傘嘅學校去訓練嘅啦，已經係已經係訓練過嘅啦，訓練過翻嚟再啊嗱點點點點嘅。再去先至再拍，咁我嗰陣時都揾到一個跳跳降落傘嘅替身，但係我咧就唔係唔係啊，即係點講？即係唔唔唔叻啊！即係學學得唔唔夠啊！咁啊，後來咧就跳飛機嗰啲咧就揾咗當地一個專門跳降落傘嘅人幫我跳，但係吊喺飛機嗰啲咧。吊喺成差唔多成四千幾尺個高空喺上面，我同佢我吊咗喺飛機度，哇落嚟，同個攝影師兩佢啊攝影師就趴喺個飛機度拍我喺，即係影住我吊喺飛機啊咁樣經過好多嗰啲，即係即係下睇得好清楚下邊嗰、那個下邊，即係都係要通通都要自己自己去做做呢啲啦，最難。落到嚟兩個人啊，淨係驚到，即係係自不然驚嘅咯，驚到兩個人都發高燒，淨發高燒。個攝影師落嚟，淨揸完機一飛機一回翻個跑道咁樣落飛機，淨瞓咗喺度，抬咗抬咗翻酒店啊！淨啲人軟曬，即係當時做嗰一剎那衝動咧，就即係好似好頂一陣，一落嚟咧個人，我喺上邊啊，哇！嗰啲嗰啲嗰啲飛機一直係咁飛，我吊咗喺個四千嘅，直情兩隻眼你。望相機，哇！望相，哇！直啲眼淚飆到，直情，因為上面一路飛啊，嗰啲，哇！原來嗰啲風力啊、阻力啊，好犀利嘅。咁啊，我哋都出資都完成咗，完成咗呢場戲。嚇、啊，咁就嗰、那個替身就係專門幫我去，本應我想自己做，我想自己做，因為我之前去學過嘅，學過點樣即係跳跳傘啊。喺嗰啲風，即係嗰啲風鼓入邊咁樣咁啊！即係你點樣定啊？咁後來後來去到嗰邊，保險公司唔得，唔俾得你做呢啲嘢。你嚟到嚟到呢邊咧，嚟到呢邊又要即係個勞工嘅問題。佢哋外國好好注重呢啲嘢嘅。佢話其實根本就係啱嘅。就算你喺美國荷里活，佢話都唔可能你做嘅。呢啲呢啲嘢係唔。你萬一有咩事，人損失好大嘅，即係成部戲嘅損失啊！佢唔係話淨係你咩，我哋跟住嗰部戲，跟住嗰啲嘢損失係好好個成果好大嘅。佢話，同埋去到嗰邊，你一係就你又自己翻香港做，紐西蘭就唔可能俾你去咁樣去做，因為嗰陣時即係電影通通都要賣命啊嘛，即係咩都要親力親為，即係觀眾先至覺得你真實啊咁啊。我自己做嘅自己，我還定我咧，我又即係，總之你俾我試過，你教我，我啊夠膽去做噶啦。誒唔得，你點都唔得。後來就去請咗嗰邊一個跳鋼傘嘅，幫我跳咗呢個。但係我咧就跟住跳落水啊嗰啲咧，通通都我自己做，但係都。有一有一條威也喺五樓咁高吊我插落個水水水嘅，都斷威也。我當時喺紐西蘭幾乎係幾乎係有危險嘅，威也斷咗落嚟，成個人個頭咁插咗落去嗰啲硬嗰啲即係所謂保護你嘅嗰啲墊啊，嗰啲墊住即係預備你，萬一哦你落嚟講鬆你來，咁你可以瞓喺度。佢諗唔到咧，鬆我來咧。一松咧就啪條威啊就，咁我就成個好似插水咁樣插咗落落個落個落個落嗰啲剪嗰度，成個人腰折，即係個個頭咧咁樣壓住喺嗰度，成個腰咁樣折咗
，可能嗰啲威亞喺度磨得興得滯嘅，磨得興得滯就斷咗。佢就係一個好似即係人哋爬山繩咁樣啫嘛，佢打個用啲爬山繩咁樣，再搭條威亞咁樣，諗住啊放下你啊上啊，又拉下你上去，又放下你落嚟啊咁樣，就諗唔到成條威亞就係咁樣磨下磨下咁樣。嗰場係根本根本就係接我跳飛機。要跳到預備要跳落海啊！就隔一個空中嘅畫面，即係隔隔隔我自己空中畫面，仲喺度，仲喺仲喺度插緊落水。嗰嗰啲護士啊、醫生啊攞刀啊，哇！吉我啲腳啊，喂！你有冇事啊？有冇即係麻痹啊？即係驚我，即係嗰啲佢睇我條落嚟咧，佢話你條頸啊，直情係因為焗住啖氣唞唔到啊。佢話條頸直情啲農夫牧師啊、袁葵啊，佢哋睇到我條頸係焗咗啖嗰啲氣喺度。出唔到嚟啊！出唔到嚟啊！咁慢慢慢慢咁去嗰啲護士啊，行開啲啊，又同我撳啊，誒嘔咗一啖白泡出嚟咧。個人咧就即係先回翻回翻到條氣。可能我哋好彩就係做咗動作多，即係運動量夠。如果唔係咧，佢話好危險啊，已經。咁我跟住冇事，咁我又可以起身又照住樣可以拍戲，嚇一樣照照做照嚟，因為嗰個精神就係、是。唔可以喺喺外國，你停咗落嚟，好大件事嘅，係嘛？好大件事噶嘛？你停咗，哇！究竟點樣人走啊？又係點啊？就係、是、咁簡單一個一個動作，幾乎就係咁樣。電視都睇唔到而家，都拍唔到，好危險嗰次。我拍戲唯一最危險就係呢次。最簡單嘅最簡單最危險同外國比咧，可能同人哋科技啊各方面啊嗰啲先進啊，就冇人哋咁咩啦。但係以我哋香港電影嚟講，呢一部咁嘅電影嚟講，誒，我諗而家都好難拍到，而家都好難拍到，你要抌好多時間啊、金錢啊落去。尤其而家香港所謂個趨勢電影咧，我諗都冇乜老細肯去<笑>肯去攞啲錢嚟拍呢啲咁嘅咁嘅戲嘅啦嚇。我都好耐好耐冇睇過咯，我都，因為我咧就點講咧，我又唔係話唔留戀自己啲戲，但係咧我係。耐唔耐記得我又會攞出嚟睇一睇，即係我會諗到啊嗰時我會拍過啲啲咩嘅，哎我我嚟抄出嚟睇一睇，即係我唔會話成日攞自己啲戲出嚟去睇自己啲戲嚇，即係有時諗下諗下啊睇下人哋哦，睇啊成日攞自即係睇下人哋啲戲啦，再對一對比翻自己以前拍嗰啲戲，好似都唔點講，而家啲戲都係咁上都係咁上下嘅啫喎，即係唔係話進步得好大喎，即係反而。以前啲嘢咧，而家係冇人拍得到。I got involved with martial arts from watching um, the Green Hornet, Cato, uh, Bruce Lee back in the day as a kid, and also uh, Jimmy Wong Yu in the Chinese matinee, you know, theater that we'd go to every Saturday um, afternoons. And those, actually, Bruce Lee and Jimmy Wong Yu were my, my greatest influence in getting into um, martial arts. And uh, when I was a kid in Canada, I remember a youngster, a friend of mine, uh, Stephen Anderjay, he got me involved. He saw me, you know, playing around with some of the guys in the schoolyard, and he, you know, came up to me and asked me, where did I train? Where did I study? And I thought he was kind of like off the wall with that question. What do I study? 
I go, if this is just me, man, this is like Kung Fu theater, you know what I'm saying? Bruce Lee, Green Hornet. And he's like, imagine what you could do, man, if you got some training. And I know just a guy, and I know just a place. And he took me to Sapin Karate, um, Grandmaster Sensei, Robert Sapin Sr. And Robert Jr. had a school in Edmonton, you know, Alberta, Canada. And he took me down there, and um, the rest is, uh, is history, as they say. How did the name Sugarfoot came about? Um, a friend of mine in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, we were kids coming up, um, working at the, you know, at Sensei Sapin's uh, gym, gave me that nickname. And that nickname came as a, uh, um, a, a melding of two names. Uh, um, of course, Sugar from Sugar Ray Leonard and the foot from Bill Superfoot Wallace. And I remember it used to call me, uh, first I tried the disco kid, um, you know, okay, the dancing kid, because my style, again, the dancing, moving around style. Then one kid one day, and he's doing it to be funny, to poke fun at me. Well, I'm sitting there in the mirror moving around, he goes, man, hey, Sugar Ray, you know, Pete Sugar Ray Cunningham. Yeah, no, 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 how about Pete Superfoot Cunningham? They go, well, wait a minute, man, you can't call him Sugar Ray or Superfoot because both those names are taken, and both those fighters are active fighters doing their thing. You can't do that. So he goes, how about, how about we call him a... Sugarfoot, ah, and they all started laughing, and, and like, you know, whatever, so we kept going, yeah, Sugarfoot, man, it's like, Sugar Ray and Bill Superfoot Wallace put together Sugarfoot. Well, what got me into kickboxing is, uh, I guess it was a natural, you know, transition from studying martial arts and boxing, you know, as a youngster. And I remember Tom Forrest Troita and Doug Dunn, um, my first kickboxing trainers, they had traveled to the States here and uh, they worked out with Benny the Jeter Kides and the Kides family, um, Ruben, uh, Blinky, Lily, Sensei Arnold, Sensei Smiley. And um, they came back stateside with, you know, with the stuff and they came to our gym and they saw myself, uh, Ivan Remillard, um, a couple of the other fighters that Bob had coming up, youngsters, and we were good tournament fighters, you know? And they thought, you know, Bob, we got some good kids here, and we could, you know, train some of these kids, like PD, Ivan, a couple of these guys, and for trade, we'll train these kids, you let's train at your gym. And one thing led to another, and there was about six of us, who uh, Tom took to 3D Amateurs, and uh, like I said, at the end of the day, myself, um, you know, was the one who turned pro, and went from there. My very first kickboxing match, um, I remember uh, heading down to Calgary. It was in Calgary. I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, and Calgary is like 300 kilometers south of us. And uh, I remember driving down there with my sensei, Robert Jr. And, uh, you know, about maybe a third of the way down there, he goes, man, that's a long ride to Calgary, isn't it? I'm like, yeah, man, it's a long ride. He goes, uh huh. He goes, huh. Well, you know what? I go, well, he goes, it's gonna be a longer ride if you lose this fight. <laughs> and so we, I'm like, okay, it's on. But we get down there, and, and to me, it was kind of exciting. It was like, I thought it was gonna be like, uh, you, you do karate tournaments all the time, you do uh, kumite, so it's the same thing, you know, just with more boxing or something like that. So it's, it's, it's no problem. And I get in there, man, it's a little different because there's nobody yelling, stop, point, when you're done. It's continuous, I mean, really continuous. And the guy's trying to, you know, rip your head off. In karate, you know, there's a bit of an honor thing, or in, a, you know, martial arts sparring, a bit of an honor thing. Crack guy a couple of times, you back up, get a point, and it's done. But this is like boxing, and this just keeps going. And um, so I guess that was a bit of a, but not too much of a, a shock for me because I'd done amateur boxing, so it was just, you know, but still a little different, you know. received this call from Hong Kong saying that they're doing a film with UMBO and they would love to have me come over and, and play a part in it. And I thought, excellent. Again, a dream come true. Um, I've always dreamt about traveling to, to Hong Kong or to China, the ancestral homeland of Jimmy Wong Yu and Bruce Lee, my two, you know, my two heroes. And here was the opportunity and um, it was wonderful. The point of my career 
that was that when I got that call to go do above the law, um, lightweight champion and um, super lightweight champion of the world, and um, we got that call right in the middle of me doing two title defenses. Uh, I, I like to tell people that in '86 I fought 12 times that year, and if you go back in the day, that's nothing for fighters, you know, in the '40s and '30s and all that. Um, and maybe even 50s, but to come to this modern time, a champion fighter, if you fight uh, three major fights, four major fights a year, that's a full schedule. Here I was doing title offense after title offense because we had several titles in, in several different you know, associations. Um, but we received that call from the guys in Hong Kong to come over and work on Above the Law with UMBO, and that was such a golden opportunity that I thought, I gotta go. Now, we'd sign a contract to fight um, you know, uh, 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 two fights, like uh, one at the beginning of the month, one at the end of the month, at the beginning of the, the, ne the next month. And when we got the call, it was like, we're going. I remember us going to Hong Kong and start working on a film, and then it's like, you know what? I got to tell these guys what's up. I thought I'd go there. It's a small part. I'll go into a small part. You know, up two weeks, I'm out. I'm back in L.A., get ready for the fight, and uh, everything would be cool, but the time's rolling and we're getting closer to it. And then I let the guys in Hong Kong know that, um, listen, guys, I gotta come clean with you now. I, um, this is a golden opportunity, and I thank you guys so greatly for having me travel to Hong Kong and, and work with uh, you know, UMBO and, and, and you all on this film. And I, it was such a great opportunity that I, I kinda gambled. And they go, what's going on? I go, well, I, I signed for two title defenses, and this film is right smack in the center of all of it. And come like next week and a half, I gotta fly back to LA, fight this fight, you know, at uh, Scott Coker's promotion in, um, in San Jose, and then fly back and finish it, and then fly back right after and fight, you know, and have this other title defense, and they, oh man, Petey, how could you do this? Uh, uh. And I thought, you know what? I mean, either way, you could be in trouble. They could fire you right then, um, you know, or, well, they could fire you. They, they, they broke me off, and I said, you know what? Go take care of business. Don't get cut, though, because we don't need no cuts in your face, you know. Go take care of business and come back. You're a great champion. We know you're going to win. Go on. Go take care of your business. I was like, wow, man. That's, that's, that's love. I was lucky, too. You could get sued. Anyway, so we, we flew over, took care of business, flew back, and um, finished the film. Flew back to L.A. for a couple of days, up to Reno, and, and defended the title again. Before traveling to um, to Hong Kong to work on 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 writing wrongs above the law, I I um I hadn't really heard you know of you and Bill before Jackie Samo you know all the time you know all over the place, and when I got there, they introduced me you know to you and Bill as Jackie's you know little brother and um, he's great he's just the other thing and gracious dude real poised you know in control and again being a fighter I can just look at you and give a good look and tell what's coming from a man and what, he, what he's about. And um, while I was there working on that film with this guy, I mean, he was doing, I think, three or four movies at the same time, you know? And whenever we met up in the evenings, you know, to start, you know, our scenes, he, um, you know, he was just coming from a set. And um, talk about energy. And um, again, poised, the gentleman, and always a given and, and sweet to work with. I can't say, you know, I can't say enough good things about this guy. I had a great experience of doing that fight scene with you and Bill. And I remember us working together, and we'd be going through the, the, the you know, the choreography, and we'd stop, and I get to hit Petey here, we do this, and you hit me, and I hit you here, and we do this, and we do that. And a couple times, say, let's do a little rehearsal, and you can touch a little bit, you know? He goes, Peter, is okay? Can I hit you a little bit? I go, Shh, of course. I said, man, I'm a professional fighter. I'm a world champion kickboxer. You can touch me a little bit. He goes, Peter, I hit pretty hard. I go, I can take a pretty good shot, you know? And he, and he, and he hit me. Oh, oh, stop. You okay, Petey? And I was like, wow, man, check him out. That's cool, you know? Because a guy, again, a, a, a performer at that level, of that magnitude, 
um, I've worked with other performers, not calling anyone's name, who, because they were a star and they had that star thing going on, they'd slap you, make a mistake, and you know, crack you onto something and think nothing of it. No sorry, no excuse, but hey, you all right? all right? And they move on. But here's this guy, you know what I'm saying? Again, you and B.O., you know what I'm saying? And he would touch me something, a body shot or something, or kicking and blocking me. Oh, Peter, is your hand okay? You all right? You sure now? Oh, man. He, no, no, he's all, you know, torn about it. No, I'm cool. I'm straight. But I'm impressed, you know, that you would care, you know? So, now it was a great experience with this dude. And, and maybe taught me a little thing about being humble, too, when I'm working with somebody who's supposed to be, you know, when you're supposed to be the, the guy in, the, in the, the film or, the you know, the program and, and somebody comes in who's supposed to be a little under, that you don't take advantage, you know what I'm saying? Check yourself. So, nah, that's, that's something I learned from, from you. <laughs> The time it took to film the uh, that fight scene in the apartment uh, with uh, with you uh, and Corey and and, um, Magoy. and Magoy, um I would say a, a few days, you know, a couple of days, and um, it was a, it was a pretty you know pretty easy um, you know work to be honest with you. Uh, everybody knew what they were doing. Um, it's fighting. So it's not a stretch, you know, for, for, for myself or for any of the guys there. And as far as reacting and all that, um, you know, again, um, not a stretch. Uh, when it came time for, like, the, the, the big stunt where UMBO jams me at the table and pushed me through the, uh, you know, the double glass you know, doors, um, that was different because I've never done any kind of stunt work before. And uh, the boys held my hands, you know, through the whole thing. And, um, you know, I came out without a scratch. <laughs> you know what? During that, the course of that fight, I don't believe I suffered any injuries uh, myself nor UMBO. I, um, I don't know if there were other, you know, scenes that I wasn't involved in with some of the other actors, but I saw a very safe set and um, very professional. I was impressed, mind you, with the stunt guys in, um, you know, on that film. And uh, these guys, I mean, when I came back here, I said, if the guys in LA think they can do stunts, they gotta see these guys. I mean, they're good, but they're tough. I'm talking, let's say here, to do a stunt where you gotta take a fall or something, I see the boys pulling the elbow pads and they pat up the elbow this much, and okay, ready, and go. I said, wow, in Hong Kong, the guys, I mean, next to nothing, you know? And they would do falls and flips and, and you know, and take shots and cracks, whatever else. I'm like, amazing. Yeah. The guys were, were, I don't know, I guess the way that they conducted themselves when we were working and the way that they conducted themselves when we were being social I thought to be quite the same. I mean, when the camera's rolling, we're all well, taking care of business. But when they say cut, everybody was, you know, very social. Hey, PD, so tell me something. We'd have little conversations in between. Okay, yeah, now nah, about the fight scene, and we take care of business, and then go right back to it. Um, just being out, music, dancing, eating, that was a good thing. But, um, again, I kept my eyes on UMBO, checking him out, you know, watching how he conducted himself, and um, he was the boss, you know what I'm saying? But the boss, in a very subtle, very smooth way, he came and I watched the respect that the local, you know, folks would give to him when they saw him. You know, oh, Mr. Bill, and they'd give him respect. And he would give respect back, and you know, he'd sit and um, you know, the the waitress would come around, and ask us, you know, what we'd like, and he'd uh, he oh excuse me, uh, ask him what he would like, and he says, excuse me, Peter, what would you like? Uh, Tom, what would you like? My trainer with me, Tom Forster, right? Tom, what would you like? Peter, what would you like? Okay, and he'd say to them, get them this, this, and this. And when they were taken care of, when we, once we were taken care of, yes, I would like this, that, and the other thing. I was like, wow, man, I like that. You know, I was impressed with that. Put it! Come on! Come on! Huh? Come on! Huh? Ah. Come on! The difference for me um, between fighting in a ring and fighting on, on. screen, um, you know, in a real fight, I mean, you get to hit the guy for real in the whole bit. What I found different 
um, when I just started doing this, started fighting, you know, in, in, in film and television, is that I thought, you know, well, just give me an actor who's a fighter, or let me do a fight scene with a guy who's a, a fighter, so I can hit him and he can look, he can look real, and we can do it for we can hit you for real. Blah, 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 blah. It don't work like that, Petey, because I've seen fight scenes that other you know choreographers have tried to do where the guys have to hit each other for real, and it doesn't sell near as you know as film fighting when a guy is doing a punch and the guy's reacting to it, and it's like it comes off great, you know what I'm saying? And that looks better than a, than a real boxing fight or a real you know kickboxing fight. <laughs> What I would le would have liked to have seen, um, I want to see the whole thing, you know, the entire fight scene between you and Bio and I, and and not too much, mind you, was kind of that, but I would have loved to have seen some of the, you know, of course you want to see more of yourself, you kidding me? But um, I believe that the choice that w the choices that were made. And the um, the scenes that were kept worked perfectly, you know, for the film. So, you know, ego, if anything, I want to see more of me on screen. But other from that, nah, come on, these boys know what they're doing. So, I'm, I'm pleased. Oh. Oh. Ah. Good girl, good. What's happening now with me, and what takes precedent with me, precedence, sorry, with me right now, is my writing career. I've written two books already, working on a third and a fourth. And um, it's along the, the lines of The Science of Mind, um, founded by uh, Ernest Holmes, and, um, and Metaphysics. And I totally um, am into that right now. Uh, also, I teach uh, kickboxing to a couple of private students. So much a part of me that for me to get my fix, if you like, I have to um, keep up a skill. A God-given talent, if you like, um, uh, and for me to get this fix, uh, that keeps me, I guess, Come on, now. grounded Good. a certain way in 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 the original Petey, the kid that always looked up to the great fighters and, and great martial arts performers, and aspired to be, you know, one of these performers, and um, by the grace of God, I believe became one of these great, you know martial artist performers and, 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 and ring fighters. I get my fix, if you like, um, through teaching a couple of very good students, you know, and um, keeps me active that way. But um, definitely writing and, um, and teaching and, um, and enjoying life to its fullest.